Uh, sige, start tayo ng accounting process. Uh, next meeting, discuss ko yung ratings ha, yung sa licensure examination at saka yung mga, yung mga documents that should be passed okay, uh, for us to be allowed to take the licensure exams. Nasusundan. So, medyo mahaba lang po kasi yung uh, mga materials natin. So, para hindi tayo masyadong mag-extend. Okay? Or kung ano man, kung mamaya, kung may oras na matira doon, isingit natin doon. Okay lang po. Sige. So, ayun. So, we'll start with uh, accounting process doon sa ating financial accounting and reporting. So, ayun. No? So, sabi niya, no? accounting is a process. So, ano po yung specific steps na ginagawa within the accounting process? And so, uh, accounting process. No? So, Ayun po. So, accounting process is the series of uh, logical steps and procedures performed by uh, a particular entity for them to be able to provide yung mga financial information needs ng users. Okay, basically, the report that will be submitted would be yung ating financial statements. Nasusundan po ba? Okay, so what are the different steps undertaken by, uh, uh, undertaken by, uh, by the entity Okay, for them to prepare the FS. So, ayun. So, ito yun, yung accounting process. Ano? The accounting process can be subdivided into two. Okay? So, ano po yung dalawang steps na yan? Or ano yung uh, dalawang sub-phases na yun? No? So, we have the recording phase. Ayan. Recording phase. And then, of course, yung ating... Okay? Yung ating uh, summarizing phase. Okay, so anong ginagawa niya muna sa recording phase tapos after that we'll have your summarizing phase. So sa recording phase, oh, may tatlong steps po dyan, ano? So first is yung analyzing the source uh, the source documents. So analyzing the source documents. So within this step, ya identify niya, ire-record ba yung transaction or hindi. Okay, so within the analyzing phase, may tatlo siyang sub procedures na gagawin. Okay, so the first procedure would be uh, yung process of identifying. So, ano ang ginagawa sa identifying? Identifying would involve uh, ident uh, would be would involve determining whether or not the event is accountable, okay? Or recordable ba siya sa libro? Nasusundan po ba? So, ano po yung mga accountable events o lahat po ng events that will have an effect on the items pres uh, Accountable events would be events that will have an impact on the different elements of financial statements. Basta po mapagalaw niya yung assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses, accountable yan. Nasusundan mo ito? Okay, so may dalawang classification ng events. Ano? O, ang events natin, pwede siyang i-classify as to either external event or ano po? internal, syempre. O, ano po yung mga external events natin? Okay, external events would include okay, yung ating first would be yung ating reciprocal transfers. Ayan. Or ito yung exchange, di ba? So, reciprocal transfers. So, the entity will be giving its resources, okay, in return, or they will be receiving another resource naman. Nakukuha po ba? So, ano po mga example ng reciprocal transfers? So, acquisition of item of PPE for cash. So, debit, equipment, di ba? Tapos magko, mawawalan tayo ng cash. Gets po ba? Okay, ano pa? Payment of liabilities. Di ba? Ano pa? Okay, so, for reciprocal transfer, Okay, payment of liabilities o collection ng receivable, di ba? So, those are examples of reciprocal transfers. Clear? Okay, next. Aside from reciprocal, o, oh, nandyan rin po yung non-reciprocal. So, paano yung non-reciprocal? So, one way lang yung transfer ng resources. Ayan, so, either si entity will be giving something with uh, without receiving anything in return or kabaligtaran naman, di ba? Okay, so we will be receiving without giving anything. Nasusundan mo siya. So ano po ang best example ng non-reciprocal transfer? Answer, donation. Diba? So pag ba, nag-donate tayo, magbibigay ka, wala ka namang tinatanggap in return. Nasusundan po. O ano pa, ano pa ang example ng non-reciprocal transfer? Lahat po ng transaction with the owners sa perspective ng investee. Okay, sa perspective ng investee. Ang bawa, nag-declare siya, uh, nagbayad siya ng dividends. Diba, bayad siya. O, wala naman siyang matatanggap in return. Nagigets po ba? Nag-issue siya ng share capital, binigyan siya ng, okay, ng, ng consideration, cash, kung anumang asset yan, 
Oh, okay, pero wala naman siya talagang binibigay. Nakukuha. O oh, pero sa perspective po ng investor, reciprocal 'yon. Kasi 'di ba, bawa, nag-invest siya sa company. Okay? So anong mangyayari doon? Nawalan siya ng resources, pero okay, nawalan siya ng cash, for example, pero meron siyang investment, 'di ba? Debit investment, credit cash. O reciprocal transfer siya sa perspective ng investor. Did you get that? Nasundan ba? Okay, next. So and then, oh, aside from The transfers, ayun, so sabi niya, external events other than oh, transfer oh, or other than transfer. So for example, okay, ano po yung mga example na external event other than transfer? So may external participation pero walang transfer na involved. Oh, example po niyan would be changes in fair value. Di ba? May external factor doon. Pero wala namang transfer of resources. Nasusundan. Ano pa? Vandalism. Okay, so sinira yung facility natin. So, di ba? It could affect the elements of financial statements. Pero wala namang transfer na nangyayari. Nasusundan. Techn uh, technological obsolescence, impairment. Those are examples of uh, external events other than transfers. Did you get that? Okay, next. Oh, for internal events naman po, ano ang mga example ng internal events? So, oh, number one dyan, oh, yung mga casualty losses. Di ba? So, na, ayan, nasunugan, okay, pinaha yung entity. Okay, so, internal event yan. Okay, ano pa? So, ano pa? Production. Di ba? Yung conversion ng raw materials to finished goods. Okay, internal event yan. Kasi nangyayari yung transaction within the organization. O, ano pa po? O, related sa biological assets. So, yung, yung tinatawag natin na biological okay, biological transformation. Ayan. So, biological transformation. So, nanganak yung baboy. O, di ba? I-recognize mo yasa yan eh. Okay. O, ano pa? Nag-mature yung baboy from 2 years old. Naging 3 years old. So, tataas yung presyo niya kasi. No? So, nung ina-account mo yung growth na yun, okay, internal event yan. Nasusundan po ba? So, regardless whether external or internal, as long as it will affect the elements of financial statements, then, okay, accountable yan. So, subject for recording po siya. Nasundan yan. So, after identifying whether the event is accountable or non-accountable, ayun, anong next step niya? O, measuring na yan. So, magkano? Di ba? O, may event na nangyari, accountable. Magkano? Nasusundan siya. Okay, so ano po yung different basis na ginagamit natin okay, in identifying the appropriate amount to be recorded as okay, uh, to be recorded as a particular transaction, no? So ano po yung mga ginagamit dito? O dun sa lumang framework, okay, sa lumang conceptual framework, o old ah, old muna po. O old conceptual framework, ano yung mga common na ginagamit uh, na uh, measurement basis? So we have your historical cost, ano pa? We have your current cost. Okay? So, ano ang current cost? Replacement cost. Di ba? Magkano pag i-acquire natin ng bagong-bago? Nasusundan mo siya? Okay? And then, we, are, we have your realizable value. Magkano yung matatanggap natin if we will be disposing a particular property. And then, aside from realizable value, we also have okay, yung ating okay, present value of cash flows or discounted value. Did you get that? Nasundan po ba? Okay, next. O, ano pa yung other measurement basis na naririnig natin when, when we were studying PFRS? O, nandyan po ang fair value. ba? Diba? O, fair value, less cost of disposal. ba? Diba? These are the items we use in measuring okay, in measuring uh, transactions. Okay? Aside from fair value, fair value, less cost of disposal, yung mga nire-require ng specific PFRS, mga inflation adjusted. Diba? Uh, uh, inflation adjusted prices in case of hyperinflationary economy. So, di ba? Di, makikita mo yun pag diniscuss natin yung hyperinflationary. Clear po ba so far? Okay. So, ayan. So, measuring. Di ba? So, after identifying whether the event is accountable and assigning peso value, anong susunod niya? O, letter C dyan. Okay? So, classifying na. Okay? So, the transaction will be classified kung anong element yung affected niya. Nasusundan po ba yun? So, oh, di ba parang mag-journal entry ka? Anong i-debit ko? Anong i-credit ko? Nasusundan yun. So, in identifying the specific accounts to be used, saan mo pwedeng kunin yung, yung mga accounts na pwedeng gamitin in recording transaction? O, malamang hingi tayo ng 
chart of accounts. Oh, tapos doon niya ibabase. Tapos lahat ng transaction if affecting a particular o a particular account o dapat pumapasok lahat doon. Nagigets mo siya. Okay, so that's classifying. Clear? O after analyzing the source documents, ano nang susunod natin? O magjo-journalize ka na. ba? Diba? So, next step is journalizing. So, ano ang uh, ano sa ang libro tayo nagjo-journalize? O anong mga libro ang ginagamit natin? So, we have your o general journal and then special journal. Nasusunod yon. O general journal Okay? O pwedeng mabuhay yung reporting system na general journal lang ang gamit. Pero pag special journal lang, hindi pwede. Kasi ang special journal, limited, di ba? So pwedeng general journal with special journals. Or general journal lang. Pero hindi pwede na special journals lang. Nasusundan po ba? Anong mga common example ng special journals? So we have the sales journal, purchase journal, cash receipts journal, cash disbursements journal, di ba? So sales journal, anong pumapasok doon? Lahat ng sales on account. Kasi yung cash sales sa cash receipts journal. Okay? Sa, anong sunod? Purchase journal, okay? Purchases on account. Kasi yung cash purchases sa cash disbursement journal naman. Nasusundan po ba? O cash receipts journal, lahat ng inflows. Cash disbursements journal, lahat ng outflows. Eh, paano yung depreciation? Paano yung amortization? Nagigets mo siya? So, may mga transactions na limited. Okay? Na, uh, ma ma na ililimit niya yung special journal. Hindi niya pwedeng i-record doon. So, saan niya i-record yun? General journal. Nasusundan po ba? Okay, so pwedeng mabuhay na general journal lang Pero hindi pwedeng mabuhay yung reporting system ng special journals lang Clear? Okay, next So after journalizing, ano po ang next step? Okay, so Ayan na, di ba? O posting na tayo So saan tayo nagpo-post? Hindi, wag magsasagot ng Facebook Okay, so saan po tayo nagpo-post? Okay, GL And then of course yung ating subsidiary ledgers. Ayan. So general ledgers and then subsidiary ledgers. O same concept, pwede kang mabuhay na GL lang. Okay, pero pero hindi pwedeng mabuhay na SL lang. Okay? Anong common na ginagamitan ng SL? Yung mga magagalaw na accounts. Okay, so ba, cash, receivables, accounts payable, inventories. O para ano lang, ba sa AR, paano ang anong difference ng GL at SL ng AR? Okay, yung SL ng ng AR per customer. Oh, di ba? Per customer. So, magkano binenta natin sa customer na to? Magkano na kolekta? May write off pa tayo? May returns, allowances, and discounts sa customer na to? Okay, pero yung general ledger niya, yung kabuuan, nasusundan po ba? Okay, so, yun. So, tas lahat naman ng posting sa SL, eventually, ipapasok rin sa GN. Clear po ba yun? Okay, so, yan. So, yan yung recording phase mo. O, di ba? Nirecord niya sa libro. Is that clear? Okay, next. So, after the recording phase, papasok po tayo dun sa next phase, which is the summarizing phase. Ayan. So, summarizing phase. So, sa summarizing phase, o, ano po ang next, di ba? Ano ang next step natin? Okay, so, after posting, ano nang gagawin mo? Isipin mo yung ginawa natin ng basic accounting. Anong sumunod? O, nag-prepare tayo ng unadjusted trial balance. So, sa unadjusted trial balance, ano ang goal natin dito? Okay, to identify kung ano po yung mga open accounts. O, ano yung mga open accounts? Account balances or accounts with uh, uh, with balances. Nasusundan po ba yon? Accounts with balances. So, pagka zero yan, dapat hindi siya mag appear doon sa unadjusted trial balance natin initially. So, ano ang main purpose ng unadjusted trial balance? To identify or to determine yung, ano po, equality ng total debits and total credits, right? Okay, so o, anong, ano dito, anong mga concept dyan? Basta hindi equal ang trial balance mo, sigurado yan may mali. Nasundan? Pero hindi porket equal yan. O, hindi yun assurance na tama yan. Nasundan po. Kasi pwede naman na ni-record niya yung transaction ng dalawang beses. E eh, di ba, every record total debits will equal your total credits dapat, di ba? Okay. O kaya naman, may transaction siyang hindi na-record. O, di balance pa rin yung debits and credits natin. Nasusundan mo siya? Nakukuha po ba? So, pagkat balance, not an assurance na tama siya. Pero pag hindi balance, sure yan na may mali. Clear po ba? Okay, so next. So, after preparing the adjusted trial balance, ano po ang susunod? Okay, susunod dyan would be to prepare the adjustments. Ayan. So, sa adjustments natin, o, di ba, isipin mo yung nag-prepare tayo, di ba, ng worksheet. Diba? So, pagka-prepare mo ng adjusted trial balance, diba? 
naglatag tayo ng worksheet tapos next two column adjustments na. O yung use of worksheet, uh, yung use of worksheet or yung preparation ng worksheet, optional lang po yun. Okay? Hindi siya required dun sa accounting process natin. So pwede mo siyang gawin o hindi. Okay? Yung preparation of worksheet. Okay? O sa adjustments, ano yung mga i-expect mong nasa adjustments column natin? Okay, so number one dyan would be the different adjusting journal entries. Ano pa? Pwede rin po na may ma-identify tayo na kailangan na okay, i-correct na mga errors. So we can also post okay, correcting, uh, correcting entries. And then aside from correcting entries, o pwede rin po yung mga reclassifying entries. Ayan, so reclassifying entries. So, ang pinaka-popular dito okay, would be the adjusting journal entries. So, pag-usapan po natin si adjusting journal entries. So, ano ba yung main reason bakit gumagawa tayo ng adjusting journal entries? Ang main purpose po ng adjusting journal entries would be to make the financial statement, okay? Uh, for, uh, to make the financial statement, okay? Uh, ano? To make the financial statements in conformity with PFRS. Okay, para ayun. So kasi 'di ba, sa PFR uh, sa PFRS nire-require niya na dapat accrual basis of accounting. Eh majority doon malamang yung mga may cash flows lang muna yung naka-record. So possible na hindi mo pa na-recognize yung mga income na kinita mo na pero hindi mo pa nakokolekta. So diyan papasok yung concept ng accruals. Nasusundan po ba? Another purpose ng adjusting journal entries would be okay, kapag po uh, Merong mga mixed accounts. Ano yung mga mixed accounts? Okay, so, di ba may dalawang klase talaga lang ng account? Ano yan? Real and nominal. Real, other term for real is permanent. Nominal, other term for nominal would be temporary. Okay, so real, ano pa ang mga real? Asset, liabilities, equity. Income and expenses, yun naman yung nominal. Clear po ba? Okay, so, however, at some point po, di ba, possible na magkaroon ka ng mixed accounts. May portion na real may portion na nominal o dapat mas split natin yon or mas segregate natin siya so doon naman papasok yung concept ng deferral okay so ano po ang ginagawa for accruals sige so paano ina account ang accruals natin okay so for accruals di ba ang accruals natin pwede yung accrued income or accrued expense so ano ang accrued income income already earned but not yet collected. So, ano ang performa journal entry niya when recording accrued income? So, debit, di ba? Income already earned but not yet collected. So, meron kang receivables, di ba? So, debit, receivable ka, and then credit, income or revenue account. So, yan yung performa entry mo. So, pag hindi mo ginawa yan, understated yung asset. Okay? Pag hindi mo ginawa yan, understated yung income. Nasusundan po ba? O, oh, net effect sa equity, understatement. Kasi understated yung net income eventually. Nagets po ba yun? Okay, for accrued expense naman, ano ang mangyayari? O, oh, pagka accrued expense, ano accrued expense? Expense already incurred but not yet paid. Okay, so incurred na yung expense, so dapat i-recognize mo na yan. Okay, kasi pag hindi, understated yung expense, overstated yung net income. O, oh, tas di ba, expense already incurred but not yet paid. So, ano meron? payable or liability account. So, yan yung magiging proforma journal entry mo. Nasundan po ba ito? Okay. So, yan. To make the financial statements or in conformity with PFRS. Okay. Next. Ano pa? Next po would be deferrals. So, anong pagkakaiba ni accrual with deferrals? Si accrual, mauna yung recognition bago yung cash flow. Okay. Si deferral naman, okay, nauuna yung cash flow bago dun sa recognition ng income or expense. Ayan. So, anong example ng deferral natin? So, we have your pre-collection and, ano po? Siyempre, pre-payments. So, ano yung concept ng pre-collection? Ano pong concept ng pre-collection? O, income already collected but not yet earned. So, anong meron ka dito generally? O, may unearned revenue, may liability ka. O, prepayments naman, okay, expenses already paid but not yet incurred. So, ano, technically, meron kang ano, 
asset, di ba? Kasi bayad na hindi mo pa ginagamit. Gets po ba yun? Okay. So, in accounting for pre-collection, okay, may dalawang methods na available dyan. Di ba? So, ano po yung dalawang methods for pre-collection? So, we have your income method at saka liability method. Okay. So, for income method, ayun. So, mauuna yung cash flows, di ba? So, date of collection. Sa date of collection, kaya siya tinawag na income method kasi ang entry niya, debit cash, and then magre-recognize siya ng income. Yan yung ano niya. Okay, yan yung entry niya dyan. Okay, etas di ba, kaya nga siya deferral or pre-collection, na una yung collection, okay, hindi mo pa na-earn. So, possible na yung income na ni-recognize na, hindi niya pa talaga kinikita. So, ano ang magiging adjusting journal entry po? Anong adjusting journal entry niya? O, debit income, kailangan niyang i-recognize yung unearned portion. Diba? So, credit and earned income. Ayan. So, ayun. So, basta po, yung counterpart niya yung establish niya. So, establish niya yung unearned portion. Ayan. Unearned portion. Nasusundan yun. So, ini-split mo, di ba? So, eto kasi mix to. Hindi pala lahat to kinita. Yung iba, hindi pa kinikita. So, yun yung establish niya sa dulo. Gets po ba? Okay, next. Oh, for liability method, so date of collection, ang entry niya, debit, cash, credit, liability. O, oh, yan yung entry. And then, anong magiging adjusting journal entry niya? Or, eto, unearned, para consistent lang po. Unearned income. O, oh, yan yung account na gamit niya. O, oh, diba, portion yan, kinita mo na. Okay, so dapat, bawasan mo yung unearned. Establish mo yung earned portion naman. So, debit and earned income, credit, income naman. Nasundan po ba? So, ang in-establish natin yung earned portion naman. Clear po ba ito? Nasusundan siya? Okay. So, yan. So, ito yung magiging adjusting journal entry niya. Adjusting journal entry. Nasusundan ako? Okay. Next po. O, for prepayments naman, So, may dalawang methods din, di ba? Ano po yung dalawang methods? We have your expense method and then we have your asset method. So, for expense method, so anong magiging unang transaction? Date of payment. So, sa date of payment, kaya siya tinawag na expense method kasi nag-recognize siya ng expense. So, debit, expense, credit, cash. Yan po yung entry niya. Eh, tas sabi nga, di ba, portion niyan, hindi pa talaga lahat na incur mo. Possible portion niyan, ano, okay, hindi pa na incur so prepaid pa dapat. Okay, so anong gagawin niya? O, debit siya ng prepaid expense or asset account and then, bawasan niya yung ni-recognize ng expense. So, anong in-establish natin? Okay, yung unexpired portion or yung unused portion. Nasusundan po? Di ba parang laging counterpart na yung establish mo sa dulo? Kasi, pag naka-expense method, edi eh expense lahat yung nakakreate. So, eh hindi pa lahat nagamit. So, i-create mo yung asset naman. Nasusundan siya? Okay, next. O, sa asset method naman po, debit, o, magre-recognize siya ng prepaid expense. Kasi nga, asset siya. Di ba? And then, credit, cash. Oh, next. Oh, Tapos sabi, di ba, portion, gamit na, portion, hindi pa gamit. So, lahat naka-establish na hindi gamit. Eh, di ba, may portion na gamit na. So, establish mo yung use naman. Oh, debit ka ng expense, bawasan mo yung prepaid expense mo. Nasusundan po ba? So, this would be the journal entry. Okay, so, anong in-establish? Yung use or expired portion naman. Gets po ba? Okay, so, this would be your common adjusting journal entries. O other journal entries would include, ano ba po? O yung recognition ng depreciation. So, anong entry pag nagde-depreciate? Debit, depreciation expense, credit, accumulated depreciation. O next, ano pa? O depreciation, amortization, di ba? O tapos po, bad debts. Anong entry pag nag- re-record ng adjustment sa bad debts? Debit, bad debts, credit, Allowance for bad debts. Okay? And then, ano ba po? O, pag nag-establish tayo ng 
ending inventory. And so, ending inventory. So, kasama yan sa adjusting journal entries mo. Nasusundan po ba? Okay to? Yes. So, these are the adjustments. So, after, okay, after preparing adjustments, ano po ang susunod? Okay, di ba gagawa ka ng adjusted trial balance? The adjusted trial balance will be used, actually, yung phase that is preparing financial statements. No? So, you will prepare adjusted trial balance okay, for you to be able to prepare yung financial statements. O, di ba? Dun sa next uh, column natin ng worksheet, di ba, una ang adjusted trial balance, tapos adjustments. Tapos, after adjustments, ano na, adjusted trial balance. Tapos, after that, pwede ka na mag-prepare ng SC, uh, income statement or uh, uh, after income statement, pwede na ang statement of financial position. So, preparation na ng financial statements. Clear po ba to? Okay, next. So, after preparing financial statements, ano po ang susunod natin? Okay, so, after preparing FS, o di, mag-closing entries ka na. So, ano ang close na entries? yung open, di ba? Hindi. Ano pa yung close na accounts? Okay, so yung mga real, uh, nominal accounts, di ba? So, uh, yung mga income accounts, so debit, di ba? Normal balance nila is credit, so i-debit mo lahat yon. Tapos saan natin siya charge? Income summary. O, tapos, lahat ng expense accounts, i-credit mo naman, tapos that income summary. O, tapos, yung income summary, later on, sa close sa capital or sa retained earnings. Nasundan po ba yun? Okay, so, ayun. So, pag credit balance ang income summary, profit or loss? O, oh, profit. Di ba? Kasi mas mataas yung credit sa kanya na income. Nasusundan po ba? O, pag debit balance naman yan, eh, di loss naman yon. Clear po ba? Okay, next. So, ayun na. Lahat ng nominal, iklo-close yan. Eventually, saan? Retained earnings. Or, kung sole proprietorship or partnership yan, part, uh, owner's capital. Is that clear? O, next. So, after closing entries, ano po ang sunod? O, after closing entries, o, prepare ka ng post-closing trial balance. O, yung post-closing trial balance, so, ano na lang ang laman nito? Ano na lang makikita mong mga accounts? Real na lang yan, di ba? Kasi, close na lahat ng nominal. O, anong kamukha niyang financial statement? Yung balances dito, yun rin yung balances na makikita mo sa Anong financial statement? SFP. Kasi di ba yun rin yung real asset, liabilities, and equity? Di ba? Sa SFP lahat yun. Nasusundan po ba? Okay. So, yun. So, that's post-closing trial balance. O, yung post-closing trial balance po, optional yan. Okay. Kasi nga, same lang sila ng balance sa SFP. Okay? So, optional to. O, so, dalawa na yung optional mo, ha? Ano po yan? Yung preparation, uh, use of worksheet, or preparation of worksheet, and then, yung post-closing trial balance. O, next. O, number nine. Tapos balikan natin to ha? Kasi, ano. Okay. O, for number nine, o, reversing entries. So, reversing entries. O, yung reversing entries, last step siya kasi, okay, ano mag, o, pero kailan siya i-record? Next accounting period. So, bakit siya kasama? Para track mo na kagad kasi ngayon mo siya dinormalize, tas i-reverse mo kagad. Tas yung mga entry adjusting entries mo, December 31 ang date. Yung reversing entries immediately after. So, next accounting period siya, January 1 naman yung entries niya. Clear po ba? Nasundan 'yon. Okay. So, 'yon. O reversing entries. Okay, optional din 'to. Diba? Optional din po yan. Kasi regardless whether mag-reversing ka or hindi, pwede kang magkaroon ng, okay, ng appropriate accounting entries. Nasusundan po ba? Yun nga lang, mas, ano po, mas convenient pag nag-reverse ka. So mamaya, ipakita natin through illustration dun sa problem solving sa uh, part ng materials natin. Okay po? Okay, okay. So, ayan yung mga sunod na steps ha. O balikan lang po natin to. O correcting entries. Ano po ang kinokorek na entries? O basta po may uh, ano ang kinokorek na entries? Basta po, okay, by error, ayan. Yung pagtatama noon would be correcting entries. Okay, so at may dalawang klase ng correcting uh, ng errors, right? We have the counterbalancing errors at saka non-counter. O ano yung counterbalancing? Ano ang counterbalancing errors? Okay? Counterbalancing errors would be 
uh, errors na after two accounting periods, magse-self-correct na siya. ba? Diba? So, ano po ang mga example ng counterbalancing errors? O, lahat po ng accruals. O, lahat ng accruals. O, illustrate natin. Halimbawa, hindi ka nag ng income. So, hindi mo to ginawa. So, anong effect nito sa net income mo? Understated. Tama? Kasi hindi siya nag-recognize ng income. O, tas wala rin siyang nirecognize na receivable. So, understated ang asset. Next po, the following year, anong presumption? Upon receiving the cash, di ba, from that accrued income, o, ang entry niya, debit, cash, credit income. Di ba? Yun yung normal reaction. Eh. So, debit, cash, credit income. So, anong nangyari sa income mo ng year 2? Overstated naman siya. Kasi dapat kailan yung income na yon? Year 1. So, under dito, over dito, eh pareho sa eventually papasok to, retained earnings. So, mag-offset yung error niya. So, sa IS accounts, Kung under sa isa, over naman sa kabila. O, pero sa SFP accounts, lahat yon tama na. Nasusundan siya. Ganon ang counterbalancing errors. Okay? So, ayun. Nasundan po. So, anong mga counterbalancing? Again, accruals. Ano pa? Deferrals using income statement methods. Okay? So, yung sa pre-collection, income method. Sa prepayments, expense method counterbalancing niya. Okay, bakit? Tingnan mo ha, kunyari dito tayo sa prepayment. Etong entry mo, hindi mo ginawa yan. E di ba, eventually, magiging expense rin naman lahat yan. Nasundan po. Okay, unlike kapag ka-asset method, nandun lang siya na asset. And, di ba, eh, di ba, nai-incur mo na siya. So, hanggat hindi mo na na, na uncover na may error, nandun lang yung prepaid expense mo. Hindi siya matatanggal sa libro mo. E eto, natanggal na nung klinos mo siya. Nasusundan po. So, ayun. So, pwedeng overstated yung expense mo ng year 1, pero, okay, dahil hindi na siya marirecognize as expense ng year 2, okay, tatama lang. Mag-offset na yung effect nila. Gets po ba? So, pagka-income statement method, counterbalancing yan. Pag-asset uh, method or liability method yan, non-counter. Clear? O, ano pa ang counterbalancing? O, yung may effect po sa inventory. Kasi bawa overstated ang ending mo ngayon. So, ano mangyayari sa overstated ang ending natin? So, ano mangyayari sa cost of goods sold? Under. Net income, over. Clear? O, tas yung ending natin, next year, ano siya? Beginning. So, overstated ang beginning. Tama ang net purchases, assume natin. O, tigas, overstated. Total goods available for sale. O, tas overstated ang tigas, di ba? Total goods available for sale minus... Ending inventory, cost of goods sold. Eh, di ba ang presumption sa ending, magbibilang uli siya. Oh, so, kunyari, tama. Okay? Eh, di ang cost of goods sold mo ngayon, overstated. Anong effect sa net income? Understated siya. Over last year, under this year, mag-offset. Gets po ba? So, yun. Counterbalancing yun. Okay na? Nasundan? Okay. Next, and then the rest, non-counter siya. Oh, ano naman po ang example ng reclassifying entries? Reclassifying entries, pwedeng dati current, uh, non-current asset siya, okay, eh, ililipat mo na to current asset. That is an example of reclassifying. Nakuha po. Okay, so yung parang wala namang error, pero yun nga, nagbabago lang ng classification. Nasundan? Okay, next. Okay. Next po. So, again, ano ang mga optional? Optional, preparation ng worksheet, post-closing, and then reversing. O, ano bang possible na tanong sa atin related sa reversing? Okay. Ano ang adjusting journal entries na pwedeng i-reverse? Ano ang pwedeng i-reverse? Answer? O, lahat po ng counterbalancing except for inventories. Okay. So, ano yon? Lahat ng accruals. Okay. Lahat ng deferrals using income statement method. Nasusundan? O, tas the rest, hindi pwedeng i-reverse. Kasi magiging illogical. Tignan mo, kunyari dito sa asset method, di ba ito yung entry? Okay? O, di ba parang ang useless na yung, 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 yung inexpense mo, ikakapitalize mo ulit. Di ba? So, babalik siya sa pagiging asset. Eh, nandun na naman siya. Eh, di ba, ang, ang in-establish natin sa dulo, yung used portion, kung ilan yung nagamit lang natin. Nagigets mo siya. So, hindi ito counterbalancing. 
Okay? So, hindi mo kailangang i-reverse yan. Di ba? Kasi illogical. Okay na? So, counterbalancing, accruals, deferrals using income statement method, at saka inventories. Ang pwedeng i-reverse, okay, yung accruals, deferrals using income statement method. Nasundan po. So, those are the concepts related to our accounting process. Okay ba? O sige, sagot po tayo ng quizzer. O game. O number one. An optional step in the accounting cycle is the preparation of, ano pong sagot natin? Letter? O letter D, di ba? Post-closing trial balance and reversing entry. So, mag-reverse ka man o hindi, okay lang. Di ba? Mag-prepare ka ng post-closing trial balance o hindi, okay lang. Gets? O next, number two. The double entry accounting system means... Oh, each transaction is recorded with two journal entries. Tama ba yun? Hindi, di ba? Ang ano, ang dual entry, may debit, may credit, pero yon isang entry lang yon. Gets po ba? Oh, ito kasi dalawang journal entries daw eh. So, mali, no? Okay, so, next. Each item is recorded in a journal entry, okay, then in a general ledger. Tama ba yun? Oh, lahat ng nasa journal entries, okay, ililipat mo eventually sa general ledger. Pero, di ba, hindi naman, and pagka-entry mo, ledger agad. Nasundan siya. Oh, next, the dual effect, the dual effect of each transaction is recorded with a debit and a credit. Tama to? Yes. So, answer po is letter o C. Nominal accounts are also called, ano, temporary accounts. So, letter A. Real accounts include all of the following except. Anong exception? So, di ba? Ang real natin, asset, liabilities, and equity. So, wala po ang dividends. Okay na? So, ayun. So, actually, sa totoo lang, parang walang account na dividend. Di ba? Hindi mo siya gagamitin. Kasi pagka nag-declare ng dividend, anong entry? Debit, retained earnings. Credit, dividends payable. O, pero kasi yung ibang companies, ang gagawin, debit, dividends credit dividends payable. O, tapos, eventually, iklo-close lang rin to sa retained earnings. So, minsan, pwedeng magkaroon ng nominal account na dividends. Basta eventually, saan lang rin ang pasok nun? RD. Kuha? Okay, next. So, number four is alpha. Number five. Equity is not affected by all ano? O, among the choices, anong pinaka pwedeng walang effect sa equity? O, letter A. Uh, letter A. Oh, Tapos yung dividends, revenue, expenses, di ba lahat yan eventually papasok sa uh, sa equity. Eh, paano pag sinabi mo, eh di ba pwede rin naman na nag-issue ka ng share capital for cash? Di ba? May cash receipts. Pero in, not all cash receipts. Di ba? Pwede rin naman na collection lang ng AR. Walang effect yun sa equity. Gets what? Okay, so among the choices, alpha. No? O revenue is impacted by debit and credit in the same way that expenses are impacted by debit and credit or false false di ba revenue pag in-increase mo credit ang expense pag in-increase mo debit kabalik tara di ba so ano ka pareho ng revenue liabilities and equity okay expense naman assets so mali na yung alpha letter b a subdivision of equity providing information about why equity increase pwede yes Okay. So, tingnan natin kung mali nga talaga yung Charlie. Reported in the statement of financial position as a current item. Tama ka? O, false. Diba? Saan siya nire-report? Okay. Income statement or statement of comprehensive income. On number 7, posting accumulates the effects of ledger entries and transfer them to the general journal. Baligtad, no? Baligtad. Okay. is done only for income statement activity because activity related to the statement of financial position does not require posting. True or false? False. Lahat, di ba? Nang affected, isasummarize mo lang naman yun eh. Di ba? Sa ledger. O letter C is done once every year. O not necessarily. Di ba? Pwede namang ano, once a month. Di ba? Para hindi maipon. Okay. So, best answer dapat, delta. Tignan mo. Transfer journal entries to the ledger accounts. Is that correct? Yes. So, letter D, delta. Number eight. 
a trial balance may prove that debits and credits are equal, except an amount could be entered in the wrong account. Tama po ba yun? So, instead na i-debit niya ng asset, dinebit niya ng expense, for example. Balance pa rin? Yes. Diba? So, hindi niya kaya i-prove yan. Diba? So, a transaction could have been entered twice. Pwede? Yes. Diba? Or, a transaction could have been omitted. Pwede? Balance pa rin? Yes. So, anong sagot natin? Delta. Number nine. Which of the following is not correct? about an unadjusted trial balance. Not correct. It proves that debits and credits of equal amounts are in the ledger. Okay to? Yes. Okay. It is the basis for any adjustments to the account balances. Pwede? Yes. Diba? Doon nag mag e magsisimula yung, ano mo, yung adjustments mo, yung identification ng adjustments. O, letter C. It supplies a listing of open accounts and their balances. Tama to? Yes, di ba? Yan yung laman niya talaga. So, dapat ang mali, delta. It proves that debits and credits were properly entered in the ledger account. So, not necessarily. Pwedeng wrong posting, di ba? Okay, so, pwedeng na, yung expense na post sa asset or vice versa, di ba? So, delta nga. O, number 10. Adjusting entries affect... O, anong napansin mo sa mga adjusting entries natin? Palagi po, lahat ng adjusting journal entry mo, laging merong ano? Real? Nominal. Nominal? Real. Nasusundan po siya. Okay, so yun. Tapos walang effect sa cash kasi nauna na yung cash flows or mauhuli yung cash flows. Nasundan po ba? So, anong sagot natin dito? Letter A. O, number 11. Adjusting entries are often prepared after the statement of financial position date but dated as of statement of financial position date. Tama po ba yan? Ginagawa daw yung entries, kunyari, mga January 15, tas i-date lang ng December 31. Tama po ba yan? Yes. Di ba? Hindi kailangan na December 31 mo rin talaga entry hand. Kasi ang lungkot ng buhay ng accountant mo. Nagsiselebrate na ng New Year, ikaw nag entry ka pa din. Di ba? So, pwede na mga niyan. No, parang iya anti date mo lang. Di ba? Okay, next. Are necessary to enable the financial statement to conform with IFRS? Okay to? Yes. Okay, and then, include both accruals and deferrals. Tama po? Yes. So, all of the choices are correct. An adjusting entry should never include a debit to revenue and a credit to liability. Debit revenue, credit to liability. Pwede? Yes. So, ano to? Pre-collection under income method. So, mali. Yung, yung alpha. Kasi never daw. Eh, pwede naman. O, letter B. Debit to expense and credit to liability. Ano yon? Accrued expense. O, pwede? Yes. Letter C. A debit to liability and credit to revenue. Liab revenue. So, ano siya? Pre-collection under liability method. Pwede? Yes. Oh, anong mali sa delta? Parehong nominal. Eh, di ba dapat laging may isang real, may isang nominal. O, oh, 13. Which of the following properly describes a deferral? Okay, so cash is received after revenue is earned. So, anong nauna? Anong nauna? Yung earning process. So, earn bago collection. So, ano yon? Accrued income. Okay. O, cash is received before revenue is earned. So, ano yun? Nakolekta niya muna bago kinita. So, ano siya? Pre-collection. So, deferral po ba yun? Yes. So, letter B ka na. O, yung letter C, ano to? Cash is paid after... O, cash is paid after expense is incurred. So, ano yun? Cash is paid after expense is incurred. So, anong nauna? Yung incurrence. Bago nagbayad, di ba? So, accrued expense po yan. O, number, o, tas yung delta, cash is paid at the same time pe uh, at the same time period that an expense is incurred. Parang nakakash lang, no? So, debit expense, credit cash siya. So, walang, ano doon, walang deferral. 14. The adjusting entry for depreciation has the same effect as the adjusting entry for, ano? So, anong entry pag nag-adjust ng depreciation? Debit depreciation expense, credit, accumulated depreciation. So, nag-recognize siya ng expense, nag-recognize ng contra-asset. So, ano mangyari sa asset? 
bababa. Okay, so asa nang nag-debit ng expense? Ito, kaya lang layab yung partner. So, hindi, di ba? Nag-debit ng expense. Ito. Tapos, anong credit niya? Asset. So, bumaba yung asset. Eh, di ba? Sa depreciation, magre-recognize ka ng contra asset. So, bababa ang asset. Di ba? Pareho sila ng effect. So, ano to? Prepayments under the asset method. So, anong sagot natin? Letter B. Bravo. Nasundan? Okay, number 15. If an expense has been incurred but not yet recorded, the adjusting entry would involve oh, incurred but not yet recorded. So, ano siya? Oh, di pwede, i-record mo yung expense. So, debit expense, di ba ito? Credit liability. So, accrued expense. So, hanap ka. May debit expense, credit liab. Wala. Wala sa choices. So, hindi yun yung hanap. So, asan po? Debit expense. O, di ba? Hindi mo pa nire-record yung incurrence na susundan. So, debit expense, credit prepaid expense. So, ano to? Prepayments under the asset method. So, anong sagot mo? So, letter C. Nasundan siya kung paano natin ginagawa. Okay, next, number 16. Which statement is not true about accrual and deferral? Which statement is not true about accrual and deferral? An accrued expense is an amount not paid and currently match with earnings. Tama po ba yun? Accrued expense ba yan na ba? Hindi pa. Di ba? Pero nirecognize mo na, minatch mo na sa earnings. Yes. Di ba? So pag sinabing match sa earnings, nirecognize mo yung expense. Okay? On. Next. Or nirecognize mo na yung income or expense na. No? On letter B. A prepaid expense is an amount paid, tama yun? Yes. And not currently match with earnings. Yes, kasi asset pa siya. Di ba? Okay, so true. Letter C. An accrued income is an amount not collected and currently match with expenses. Tama ba? Accrued income is an amount not collected. Tama, di ba? Receivable siya. Okay. Pero, nirecognize mo yung income? Yes. So, match with expenses. Okay yun? O, next. O, yung delta. Dapat, ito yung mali, no? A deferred income is an amount collected. Tama? Yes. And dapat not currently match. Di ba? Hindi pa siya nirecognize as revenue kasi unearned siya. Did you get that? Okay. So, answer po is delta for number 16. Number 17. Which statement best describes the purpose of closing entries? O ito, kahit hindi mo basahin, di ba ang tamang sagot ay letter? C. Bakit? Mahaba. Okay, yun lang. De, okay, so Charlie, hindi, tama naman po yung Charlie. To reduce the balances of temporary accounts to zero so that they may be used to accumulate revenue, expenses, and dividends of the next period. Okay na? O number 18. So, the post-closing trial balance consists of statement of financial position accounts only. Tama po ba yan? Yes. Will balance if a transaction is journalized and posted twice. Hindi niya pa rin na-uncover. May dalawang basis pala siyang nirecord. Pwede? Yes. Diba? Okay. Shows that the accounting equation is in balance at the end of accounting period. Tama yan? Yes. Okay. So, answer po would be delta. Number 19. Adjusting entries that should be reversed. Ano uli ang i-reverse mo? Accruals and deferrals using income statement method. So, tama po ba yung letter A? Yes. Yung letter B? Tama? Yes. O yung letter C? Those that debit an asset. So, dapat expense method. O, adjusting entry, nag-debit ng asset? Yes. So, kasi yung asset method, ang dinebit na expense. So, dito, reverse. Ah, hindi pwedeng i-reverse. Next po, sa income naman, those that credit a liability. So, nag-credit ba siya ng liab? Yes. Gets po? So, income method ba yun? Yes. Kasi dito, ang credit niya, income. Gets? Okay. So, anong sagot? Delta. 20. Reversing entries apply to ano, all adjusting entries? Yes. Ay, hindi. All adjusting entries, hindi. Kasi nga, accruals and then deferrals using income statement method lang. All deferrals, hindi. Kasi nga, income statement method lang. 
All accruals? Yes. So, letter? O, C. So, number 20, Charlie. O, number 21. What is the impact of the adjusting entry on December 31, 2019? O, so, number 21 po. An entity is a resort located in Palawan. The entity collects cash when guests make a reservation. So, uh, so anong method? Uh, ano siya? Pre-collection, di ba? Mag-reserve ka, bayad kayo. So, during tw December 2019, the entity collected 600,000 of cash and recorded the receipt by recognizing an earned revenue. So, anong method siya? Liability method. So, ang entry niya, December 31, O, basta nung collection, nung, nung date of collection po, debit cash, credit, unearned income or unearned revenue. So, magkano? 600,000. O, next. Uh, the entity had earned one-third of this amount and other two-thirds will be earned during January 2020. Okay, so magkano daw ang kinita niya? One third, so one third of six hundred, two hundred. So magkano lang ang unearned dapat? Four hundred. So bawasan natin to, di ba? So debit, unearned revenue, magkano po? Two hundred, di ba? Yung earned portion. Yan credit, revenue. Kung ano bang appropriate account yan? So two hundred thousand. So eto yung adjusting journal entry niya. So ano daw ang impact nito? <coughs> A 400,000 increase in equity. True or false? False. Ano lang ang increase sa equity? 200 yung revenue. Diba? O 200 decrease in liability. Tama ba yun? From 600, kinawang 400. Nag-recognize tayo ng 200,000. So true ba to? Yes. Okay, so letter B. So anong mali sa Charlie? 600,000 increase in asset. Tama siya. Kung yung sa collection, kasi ito yun, mag-increase yung asset. Pero yung adjusting entry, wala namang effect sa assets. Okay? O letter D, 200,000 increase dapat in equity. O number 22, which of the following statements is true? An entity is a resort located in Katiklan. During December 2019, PICPA held an annual conference at the resort so the charges related to the conference totaled 4 million, of which 25% had been paid. So magkano na kolekta? 1 million. Diba? So ang entry niya, ano po? O, debit cash. O, tas dahil na earn niya na yan, so credit siya ng revenue. Magkano? 1 million. Paano mo nalaman? Kasi tignan mo, sabi niya, the entity failed to make the appropriate adjusting entry on December 31, 2019 for the uncollectible balance. So, ano, anong hindi niya ginawa? Hindi siya nag-accrue ng income. Diba? So, that kumita na siya eh, kasi na-render na service. Hindi niya nga lang nakokolekta pa. So, ang entry niya dapat should have been debit AR, credit revenue. So, magkano po dapat? 3 million. O, yung 75%. So, Ito yung hindi niya ginawang adjusting journal entry. So, anong magiging effect niyan? O, letter A. O, hindi niya ito ginawa, ha? Hindi niya ginawa. So, equity is overstated by 3 million. True or false? False. Kasi dapat mag-recognize nga siya ng rep na 3 million. Eh, hindi niya ginawa. So, under yung equity. Equity is understated by 1 million. False. Dapat 3 million. Assets are understated by 3 million. Tama? Yes. Kasi hindi niya na-recognize yung receivable na 3 million. Okay? Next po. Number, oh, number 23. During the first year of operations, an entity record, uh, recorded all purchases of supplies as assets. So ano siya? Anong method siya? Tama? Okay. Asset method. A store supplies in the amount of 2 million were purchased. So, anong entry niya po to record that? Debit. Okay, debit. Anong gamit na account? O, store supplies. So, debit store supplies. 
Magkano? 2 million. Kasi lahat, asset daw eh. Credit, cash. 2 million. So, yan yung entry niya. And then, actual year and store supplies amounted to 500,000. So, hindi talaga 2 million yung natitira. Magkano lang daw? Okay. So, 500,000. Uh, 500,000. So, ano gagawin natin? Bawasan natin yung store supplies. Diba? So, debit, store supplies, magkano? O, 1.5 para maging 500 na lang siya. And then, debit, supplies expense. Supplies expense. 1.5. Nasundan? Okay. So, ayun. So, what is the impact of the adjusting entry? Ito daw, anong impact nito? So, increase in net income of 1.5. True or false? False, kasi nag-recognize ka ng expense. So, bababa yung net income mo. Increase in expenses of 1.5. Tama to? Yes. So, letter o B. Decrease in store supplies, dapat 1.5. Decrease in AP. So, wala naman yun. Ano? O, 24. O, ito, pakita natin, what if mag-reverse siya? What if hindi mag-reverse? Anong entries? Okay, so, o, sagutin muna natin. So, nag-reverse siya dun sa problem, no? Kasi with, ayun, sabi niya, no? Nag-reverse. So, with reversing entry. And then, what if walang reversing entry? Anong mangyayari? O, 24. An entity reported the office supplies account at the beginning of the year with a balance of 40,000 before the reversing entry. So, last year, paano po ang, eh, ano? Last year, nag-recognize siya ng, ano? Ng prepaid, no? So, prepaid supplies. Ba yung account? Office supplies. So, para consistent tayo. So, debit office supplies, credit, supplies expense. O, diba? Yan yung entry niya. So, magkano daw? 40,000. So, anong ginawa niya? This year, di ba, i-reverse niya to? Okay, so, debit, o, reverse niya. Supplies expense, credit, office supplies. So, magkano po? 40. So, yan yung sa reversing niya. Okay, and then, payments for office supplies during the year amounted to 250 and were recorded as expense. So, nag-record siya ng expense, debit, supplies expense, credit, cash. O, diba, lahat daw eh. O, naka-expense lang. So, magkano po ito? Magkano pong in-expense niya? 250,000. 250. O, next. O, di ba, pagka ganyan, anong sabi natin? Establish mo lang yung un unused portion. So, magkano pong unused portion at the end of the year? A physical count at the end of the year revealed office supplies costing 50,000. So, anong entry niya? Debit, office supplies, magkano establish? 50,000. O, yun yung maganda pag nag-reverse Kung ano yung normal na ginagawa mo sa dulo, ganun lang. Okay? And then, credit, supplies, expense. So, 50,000. Nasundan po ba? So, magkano ang, okay, magkano ang expense mo? Di ba? Theoretically, may starting ka na 40. Tapos, bumili ka ng 250. So, 290. Tapos, 50 yung unused. So, meron dapat matirang magka... Ay, magkano naging expense mo? 240. O, 240 nga po ba? Diba? Debit siya ng 40. Debit siya ng 250. Credit ng 50. So, 240 nga. O, magkano office supplies mo? Magkano office supplies mo? 50. Diba? So, diba? Sa simula ng taon, may running balance to. Kasi real account to. Diba? Hindi niya naman i-close. So, nagsimula ka ng 40... Tapos, dinirecognize mo yung 40, so 0 na. O, tapos, office supplies na 50. So, yun, may 50,000 ka na. Gets po ba? Okay, so yun. So, anong sagot natin? O, what is debited 
in the adjusting entry. Sagot? Ito. Office supplies of 50,000 pesos. Okay na? Or what if walang reversing entries? Or what if walang reversing entries? So, ayun lang. So, gagawin niya to last year. Tapos ito, eh, no entry dito. Kasi nga, walang reversing entry. Okay, so, no reversing entry. So, magkano running balance pa rin ng office supplies mo? 40. Di ba? Yung hindi close na 40. Ito, yung in-establish dito. Clear? O, next. O, tas nagbayad siya, same lang. Okay? O, tapos, magkano daw ang unused? 50,000. Eh, meron nang nakarecord na magkano? 40. So, anong adjustment mo? O, debit, office supplies, okay, office supplies na magkano? 10,000. O, tas credit, supplies expense. Yun yung entry niya. So, di ba medyo mag-iisip pa siya? Okay, so, kung isang transaction yan, madaling tandaan. E, paano kung ang dami? Gets po? So, yun. O, tingnan mo, magkano expense niya? Tingnan mo, di ba? Wala siyang reversing, so wala siyang nakarecognize na to. Okay, so, ang ano niya lang, 250. Tapos, babawasan niya ng 10. So, 240. Similar kanina. Right? Okay, next. Magkano office supplies? 40 yung running balance. Nag-establish ka ng 10, 50. So, same lang po ba? Yes. O, pero yung adjusting entry magkaiba. Nasundan mo? Okay, so, ganun po. So, doon, parang doon pag walang reversing, i-consider mo kung ano yung nakaset up. Tapos, i-adjust mo na lang. Eh, dito talagang as in walang nakaset up. Kung ano yung nabilang mo sa dulo, yun yung okay, e-entryhan mo mismo. Nag-gets po ba? So, kaya mas convenient pagka nag-re-reverse. Nasundan? Okay. So, yun ha. So, yun yung gamit ng reversing. Next po. Number 25. So, an entity reported wages expense of 1.1 million for 2019. O, the wages payable at the beginning of the year amounted to 100,000. Wages are uh, wage payments during the year total. 950. The previous year adjusting entry for unpaid wages was reversed. So, anong sabi natin pag nagre-reverse? Gawin mo lang ng normal. Alamin mo, magkano yung okay, magkano yung dapat na iset up na accrual. Okay? So, ayun. Tapos, what is the adjusting entry for accrued wages? So, magkano ang beginning wages payable natin? 100. O, tapos, nag-incur ka ng magkano? 1.1. So, magkano ang utang mo lahat-lahat? 1.2. Eh, magkano lang ang binayaran niya? 9.50. So, anong adjusting journal entry niya? O, kung with reversing yan, o, set up mo lang, di ba? So, with reversing entry, ang entry niya po ay debit, wages expense, magkano ang utang niya? 2.50. O, credit, wages, payable. Wages payable, 250. Nasundan mo yon. Nakuha po ba? So, anong sagot natin? Letter C. O, next. Paano kung without reversing? O, without reversing. So, meron siyang running balance na ano? Magkano running balance niya? Ng liability? Yung beginning, 100. Eh, magkano dapat ang dulong utang niya? 250. So, magkano yung i-adjust mo? 150. So, ang entry niya, debit wages expense, credit, wages payable. Wages payable, 150,000. Magiging sagot mo naman is letter, ayan, letter o B. O, di ba, may nagmamatter yung reversing entries. So, yun yung medyo iingatan natin. Okay po ba? O, sige. Next, o, number 26. Okay. 
Number 26 po, anong hinihingi sa atin? Prepare the indicated adjusting entries from the following adjusted and unadjusted trial balance. So, paano mo po malalaman kung kung may adjustment na ginawa? Eh di kung nagbago yung amount, di ba? Okay, so tignan mo yung cash. So, nagbago po ba? Hindi, di ba? Okay, so walang adjustment dyan. O, accounts receivable from 190 naging 200. So, may increase na 10,000. Nasundan? O, note po natin na increase na 10,000. So, alamin natin saan, saan pwedeng maging related yan. O, art supplies from 85 naging 35. Okay, so malamang may nirecognize na expense to. Diba? Okay, so nag-decrease naman siya by 50,000. Okay? Okay. Tapos pag nakita na natin yung related niya, mamaya pwede natin balikan. Okay. Prepaid insurance from 33 naging 25. So, nag-decrease ng 8,000. Okay. So, nag-decrease ng 8,000. So, malamang may nirecognize na insurance expense. Diba? Okay. O, accumulated depreciation from 270 naging 355. So, malamang may nirecognize na depreciation expense. Diba? O equipment, wala naman naging change. AP, 50-50 pa rin. O interest payable, dating zero, naging 2,000. So, may anong ginawa niya? Nag-accru to ng interest. So, tingnan natin kung may interest expense ng 2,000 mamaya. O next, note payable, 50-50. Unearned service revenue, magkano po? From 70, naging 56. So, may na-earn siya. Diba? Okay, parang really, pwedeng maging related to sa AR. Diba? O, tignan natin. Salaries payable. From 0, naging 15. So, ano to? Nag-accru ng salaries. Share capital, RE. Wala namang nangyari. Ano? O, service revenue. From 586, naging 610. O, so, may na-earn siyang magkano? 24. O, kaya lang sa ibabaw, wala namang direct na 24. So, mamaya na natin i-analyze, di ba? Okay, pero alam mo naman na yung AR yun at saka unearned service revenue. Okay? O, next. O, tapos tingnan mo to. Salaries expense from 10,000 naging 115. So, anong nire-represent nito? O, yung increase dun sa salaries payable. So, ang entry ginawa niya, debit salaries expense, okay, credit, salaries payable. So, magkano? 15,000. O, na-account na natin, ha, yung increase dun sa dalawang accounts na to. So, that's the first adjusting entry. O, next, insurance expense from 0 to 8. So, tas tinignan mo, ano related account na sa ibabaw? Yung prepaid insurance. Nag-recognize siya ng expense. ba? So, anong method ang gamit ni company? Anong method ang gamit ni company? Asset. Kasi may nakaset up na asset. ba? So, ang entry niya, debit, insurance expense, credit, prepaid insurance. Credit prepaid insurance. Magkano po? Okay, 8,000. O, next. Interest expense. From 3,000, nagkaroon naging 5,000. So, ano to? Accrual ng interest. Di ba? May related na amount doon na 2,000. Yes, di ba? Yung interest payable. So, debit. Interest expense. Credit, interest, payable. Ayan. So, interest payable. Magkano? Okay. So, 2,000 pesos. Next. Depreciation expense from 0 to 85. So, yun nga. Yung change dun sa accumulated depreciation. So, debit depreciation expense. Credit accumulated depreciation. Magkano? 85,000. Na-count na natin yun, ha? O, next. Art supplies from 50 ginawang 100. So, anong related sa ibabaw? Art supplies. So, anong method siya? Asset method. May nakaset up na asset. So, debit. Okay. Art supplies expense na magkano po?
50,000 and then credit ay art supplies. So yung asset di recognize na 50,000. Okay na. Nasusundan po. So ano na lang ang hindi natin na account? Yung rent expense wala namang change. Yung sa service sa AR sa unearned at saka dun sa service revenue. So anong entry mo? Oh, debit AR 10,000 tapos service revenue 10,000. Eh ang dapat na increase sa service revenue magkano? Magkano? So ito accrual, no? O dapat ang increase ay 14. Tapos pag tingin mo, bumaba ang unearned. O, so ano naman 'to? Deferral, no? So unearned service revenue na magkano? 14,000. Nasundan po ba? So 'yan yung mga okay, mga adjusting entries natin dyan. Okay? O, next. Nasundan po ba? Okay na? O, number 27. O, number 27. So, an entity provided the following December 31 trial and, trial and adjusted balance. Okay? So, ayun. So, may mga balances. And then, Budget expense is estimated to be 15,000. So, anong gagawin lang natin? Set up lang tayo, no? So, wala namang budgets na nakabigay. So, debit, budgets, credit, allowance for budget, uh, allowance for doubtful accounts. Kasi yun yung nandun, eh. So, para consistent lang po. 15,000. Okay pa? O, number two. Anong sabi? Equipment is depreciated on a 7-year life. So, recognize tayo ng depreciation. So, debit, depreciation expense, credit, accumulated, depreciation. So, magkano po? So, magkano ang cost? 840, wala namang salvage value na binigay. Ano? So, divided by 7. So, this would be 120,000. 120,000. Next, number 3. Insurance expired during the year 25,000. So, tingnan mo, may related account po ba sa ibabaw? Yes, no? May prepaid insurance. Tapos 25,000 daw nag-expire. So, anong entry mo? Debit, insurance expense, o, debit, insurance expense, credit, prepaid insurance. So, anong method siya? Asset method, di ba? So, 25,000. Note mo ha, asset method to. O, next, number 4. Anong sabi sa number 4? Interest accrued on note payable. So, accrual of interest. So, debit, interest expense, credit, interest, payable. So, magkano po yan? 35,000. 35,000. Next, number 5. Salaries accrued, 24,000. So, debit? Ah, sales salaries, no? Debit sales salaries expense, magkano po? 24,000. And then, credit? Salaries payable. Okay, 24,000. Number 6, advertising paid in advance, 10,000 pesos. So, anong may related account po ba siya? Yes, no? Ayun, may advertising expense siya. Eh, pero may paid in advance daw na 10,000. So, anong method siya doon? Expense method. Kasi lahat in-expense niya. Nasusundan? Okay, so anong entry mo? So, debit o prepaid advertising magkano daw? 10,000 and then credit advertising expense. So, hindi pa lahat expense. Ano? So, yung 67, 57 lang yung expense. O, next, number 7. 
office supplies on hand, 15,000. Charge to office expense when purchased. So, anong method siya? Expense. O, nasan yun? Magkano yung office expense na ni-recognize niya? 50. Dapat magkano lang? Okay. 35. Kasi may 15 na unused. So, debit, office, supplies. O, debit, office supplies, credit, ano po? Office expense. So, magkano? 15,000. 15,000. So, yan yung entry mo dyan. Nasundan po yung mga adjusting entries natin. Okay. So, ngayon, anong hinihingi? Prepare adjusting entries and closing entries. So, mag-close tayo. So, sige. O, closing natin. So, una, mga income accounts muna. So, ano ang income accounts niya? O, sales lang naman, tas wala naman tayong na-create na income dito, di ba? Okay, so debit, sales, credit, income, summary. So, magkano po yan? 6 million pesos. Nasundan? O, next. Lahat naman po ng expense account. So, debit, income, summary, Credit expense account. So, ano yung mga expense account? So, sundan natin yung sa ano ha? Sa trial balance niya. So, cost of goods sold. O, cost of sales. Magkano daw po ang cost of sales niya? O, hindi naman natin ito in-adjust, di ba? So, 4 million 80,000. Next po. Sales salaries expense. O, ginalaw ba natin to? Yes, di ba? Note mo na lang ha? So, magkano na po ang bagong sales salaries? So, dati 500. O, tas asa ng sales salaries natin? Ito. Okay. So, plus 24. So, 524,000. O, galing po sa adjusting entry number 5. Next, advertising expense. O, sundan lang natin to para mas organized lang. So, magkano ang advertising expense mo initially? 67 pero oh credit natin ng 10 so magkano na lang siya 57 okay oh next ano pa administrative salaries expense so magkano ang administrative salaries expense so, 650. Ginalaw po ba natin to? Hindi, no? O, next. Office expense. O, ginalaw mo ba yan? Yes, di ba? From 50, binawasan natin ng 15. So, okay na tayo dito. So, magkano na lang po? 35. Gets? Okay pa? Yes. Okay, next. Ano pa? So, okay na yung lahat ng expense. So, yung mga create na bago. So, bad debts. So, magkano ng bad debts mo? 15. And then, depreciation expense. Magkano yung depreciation expense natin? 120. Okay? And then, ano pa? Insurance expense. So, magkano ng insurance expense mo? 25. Okay na? O, so, sa yun. Interest expense. So, magkano po yung interest expense? 35,000. Nasundan? Okay pa? Sige. So, wala na, no? Ayan. So, magkano po ang income summary? Or total lang ng expenses? 5,541,000. So, 5,541,000. Okay. Tapos, ayun. So, anong balance ng income summary? Debit or credit? Credit. Kasi mas malaki yun. Di ba? So, may profit. Kumbaga. So, debit income summary, magkano balance? 459. 459,000. And then, credit? O, retained earnings or owner's capital. No? O, dito, ano? RE. Di ba? So, 459,000. 
So, yan po yung journal entries natin. Or closing entries. Nasundan po? Okay? O, next. So, letter ay number two. What adjusting entries should be reversed at the beginning of the next accounting period? So, balikan natin yung adjusting entries. O, bad debts, pwedeng i-reverse? Hindi. Depreciation? Hindi. Asset method? Hindi. Ito, ano to? Accrual, i-reverse? Yes. Ano to? Sales salaries expense, credit salaries payable. Ano to? Accrual, reverse. Prepaid advertising, debit, pre, uh, advertising expense. So, anong method siya? Expense method. So, pwede i-reverse? Yes. Office supplies, or office supplies, credit office expense. So, naka-expense method. So, pwede i-reverse? Yes. Nasundan siya? Okay. So, yan po yung ating uh, accounting process. Okay pa yun? Nasundan? O, sige. Sige. Natin yung uh, ating short break. Tapos, after that, we'll have your conceptual framework.